This tanker is carrying over $40 million worth of liquefied natural gas across the ocean. The cargo aboard this ship has not yet been paid for with cash, but the seller has already locked in a profit, guaranteed by one of the world's largest banks. How can this be possible, given the no arbitrage principle? This principle is often one of the first principles taught in financial engineering courses. The principle, of course, states that in an efficient, competitive market, no opportunity should exist to make a risk-free profit. Take, for instance, the famous Black-Scholes model for options pricing or the forward contract pricing model. Both are based on no arbitrage assumptions, essentially stating the price of a derivative should not allow for risk-free profits, yet market inefficiencies and discrepancies persist. The Black-Scholes model is a concept very much linked with the origins of our company, Giving Desk. When we started, we built algorithms that leveraged Black-Scholes to understand when options prices might be, well, mispriced. Black-Scholes takes into account five key variables. The historic price volatility of an asset, the expiration date of an option, the risk-free rate, the strike price of an asset, or the price it can be purchased for an expiration, and the current price of the asset. You can memorize the equation, but you can also use one of the calculators provided below in the description if you need it. However, looking at historic volatility based on historic prices can equate to driving on the highway using only the rearview mirror. Companies and market conditions change. This brings us to Mark Rich, one of the most prolific arbitragers in history. One of Rich's most audacious exploit was creating a secret oil pipeline between Iran and Israel during the oil embargo of the 1970s. This audacity and innovation led to the establishment of what would later become Glencore, one of the world's largest commodity trading companies. In fact, a CFA test app question poses, which of the following scenarios is most likely to result in a decrease in market efficiency? The answer, an increase in arbitrage opportunities. This is because arbitragers exploit these opportunities, ironing out pricing discrepancies and contributing to market efficiency. Mark Rich's exploits came at a price. Mark Rich was indicted on multiple charges in the US, including trading with Iran during the hostage crisis. His story underscores the risk involved in arbitrage opportunities. There's always a risk, financial or otherwise. This is the real essence of zero arbitrage though it appears that markets may always be inefficient. And perhaps that's simply how profit is derived. The nature of a company violating the no arbitrage principle can be a key measure of risk and thus pricing, especially in valuations. Typically, a certain type of monopoly can ensure an endured no arbitrage principle violation. This produces lower risk profitability with the custodians of the asset or the management of the companies playing the largest role in the risk equation after that. This brings us to CAPM, or the Capital Asset Pricing Model. This model outputs the required return, commonly referred to as the cost of equity. This model works by measuring the sensitivity of an asset to the market, or its beta. CAPM requires us to input the beta. This is a subjective and crucial detail. The sensitivity or beta could be determined by the strength or endurance of a monopoly. The greater the strength, often the lower the risk. This is the method we use. In Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One, he identified four types of monopolies. These include proprietary technologies or methods, network effects, economies of scale, and branding. Proprietary technology is based on the fact that others are prevented by either patent laws to produce something or a trade secret is so great that the tech cannot be re-engineered, as is in the case with things like nuclear power monopolies. With network effects, this is the case with platforms like LinkedIn, where the sheer number of users prevent much competition. With economies of scale, this is the case where the sheer size of an operation leads to lower costs of total expenses that others can't compete with, as is the case with companies like Foxconn, the leading manufacturer of Apple's devices. For branding, this is the case with a company like Coca-Cola, 
some people will literally not try an alternative beverage because of brand trust. There might be a fifth type of monopoly, and that could be legal arbitrage, whereby the laws in a jurisdiction provide permits to certain companies, making these companies the only legal supplier. Uh, this is the case with the large sugar companies of the United States who do not have to compete with international suppliers by law. Back to Mark Rich. Mark Rich's arbitrage was based on the proprietary technology and methods monopoly. His secret pipeline, as well as the development of the spot market for commodities in an environment when large oil companies only entered into long-term future contracts with oil producers, provided for a competitive advantage. When exploring a company's financial model, it is essential to understand where the monopoly lies and the strength of retaining and enhancing that type of quote-unquote monopoly. This leads to better pricing and valuations. This ship has cargo that hasn't been paid for yet. Mark Rich was one of the innovators around this form of trade financing, leveraging letters of credit that is now commonplace and drives more transaction efficiency, leading to less arbitrage. This liquid gas seller would likely need an economies of scale monopoly or a high moat proprietary technology. Else, the no arbitrage principle can eventually ensure diminished returns in the long term. Stay tuned for more financial adventures.